Gyere a Karib tengerre. Házasodj és szaporodj. Férfi ruházat. Ne gondolkodj! Zárva! Vásárolj! Ne gondolkodj! Ne ébredj fel! Hódolj! Köszönöm! Köszönöm! Vásárolj! Ne gondolkodj! Ne ébredj! Hódolj! Nézd téged! Engedelmeskedj! Engedelmeskedj! Ne ébredj fel! Vásárolj! Ne ébredj fel! Nézd tévét! Vásárolj! Engedd! Hódolj! Vásárolj! Hódolj! Nézd tévét! Ne ébredj fel! Ne ébredj fel! Ne ébredj fel! Ne ébredj fel! get things rolling, I had to know more about the inner workings of the subconscious mind itself. So we met with the man I consider the godfather of subliminals, Wilson Brian Key. Wrote four books on the subject back in the 1970s and early 80s, including the bestseller, Subliminal Seduction. If you look at something, smell something, hear something, it's going into your brain at the speed of light almost. And all being retained. Now what comes out in terms of cognitive or conscious perception there's very limited bits and pieces of this. One of the earliest acknowledgments of the unconscious process appears in some of Aristotle's writing, which goes back a good bit. Sigmund Freud was the first person to coherently probe the existence of the unconscious and postulate that people have a lot of emotions and drives that they're not aware of. Freud's theories were, at, at the time, very uh, controversial. As he was telling people, in a sense, things they didn't really want to know about. Freud used a number of techniques to determine what their unconscious conflicts were, and uh, one of those that he was very involved with was interpreting their dreams. He felt that when people were sleeping, the barrier between the unconscious and the conscious relaxed, and uh, the people actually experienced in the dream state their true unconscious motivations. Freud wrote an interesting book on the uses of these things socially, and he warned these are dangerous toys to play with because we don't understand them, we're not likely to understand them, and they're capable of triggering off a uh, pathological response. You know, it really started in America with Ed Bernays, who imported and used some of uh, uh, Freud's, uh, you know, psychoanalytic theories to give people in their consumer choices substitutes for sort of primal urges. In his book, Propaganda, he said it was the duty of marketing people to lead an otherwise uh, unleadable, irrational, uh, 
free people to making a consensus or a decision that was a responsible decision. And so we've had, we had a marketing philosophy that was inherently about manipulating and motivating a public. In times like these, most men become highly suggestible. They listen eagerly for any voice which sounds authoritative. They listen eagerly for anyone who can tell them what is wrong and what to do to right it. And the best way to sell is to find an access to the subconscious. So you're not just presenting a product or a picture or a celebrity in, in film. You're, you're making that accessible to the unconscious processes of millions of people. To be effective, a subliminal message has to either stimulate an unconscious anxiety or satisfy an unconscious fantasy. You discover very quickly that the human brain is extremely sensitized to things that deal with the beginning of life, reproduction, uh, sex as we vulgarize it, and the end of life, death. Now if you can plant something in there that's strongly motivating, sex and death, the unconscious will remember that for a long time. We don't know for how long. According to Key, examples of this type of subliminal embedding date back much further than we're aware. However, not everyone we spoke with agreed on this. Most people can see what they want to see in almost anything. And there's an author who's a, a I mean, it's a sad and paranoid guy who sees sexual imagery and ice cubes and everywhere he looks. Is there any way you could call that something else? I mean, it's not a telescope, it's not a leaning tower of pizza, it's a penis. The problem is we hide this stuff from ourselves, we don't want to deal with it. And once you come to terms with this, it turns the whole world upside down. If uh, uh, the medieval artists could do it, why not Chicken McNuggets? I must admit that I too started questioning the Godfather's credibility when he claimed that SEX was embedded all over and even baked onto the Ritz cracker itself. Uh, the SEXs are all over the cracker. Makes them taste better. I love Ritz crackers. The fact that he made some allegations that are not credible doesn't mean that the substance of what he had to say wasn't you know, logical and totally persuasive. I decided to give Key the benefit of the doubt and hear him out on some of his other examples. This ad appeared on the back cover of Playboy of Time. The ad was used for about three years. How could this stuff ever sell Johnny Walker scotch? They didn't put any scotch in the glass. The glass is empty. Now, if you look at the ice cube that's on the table, the right side of that ice cube, you see an interesting looking face. Or a grotesque, almost surrealistic uh, mask. It's not an interesting figure to put in an ad. Uh, it's a monster with encircling arms and a skull-like face. It's a death symbol. There are a dozen of them in these six ice cubes. Author August Bullock has expanded on Key's early theories in his recent publication, The Secret Sales Pitch, an overview of subliminal advertising. The predominant trend in modern subliminal advertising is, seems to be uh, sexual assault or sexual violence. And this is an example of that. If you look at her facial expression, it could be that she's finding it extremely unpleasant. And the, the person on the left seems to be violently ripping her necklace from her throat. Well, it, it reinforces the idea that women are victims and, and that it's sexy for a woman to be a victim. And that's very powerful and very important to maintain status quo in our culture. And that's how you can uh, convince men also that she deserves to be violated. She, uh, she wants to be hurt. She's, you know, look at her. The motivational researchers in the 50s developed a variety of electronic equipment that they could measure people's unconscious reactions to. Like uh, one of these was a galvanic skin response where they would measure minute fluctuations in the amount of sweat on your skin, which was related to your state of anxiety or also a heartbeat, or uh, they had special cameras in supermarkets that would measure the dilation of the pupils that would indicate how interested a person was in a crime. I looked into the numerous studies published in scientific journals since the late 1950s and found that the majority showed evidence of our mind's ability to register subliminal perception. 
the advent of new technology, positon emission tomography, enhanced uh, magnetic resonance imaging, etc., and we're seeing a whole lot of new research come out, shows us what areas of the brain are excited by subliminal stimulation. Kilborn and Associates uh, in the mid-80s did a fascinating experiment when they took two actual advertisements that they believed contained subliminal impacts that they had found on their own. One of them was a Marlboro ad uh, which showed uh, you know, guys on a horseback driving through the range with big rocks around them and one of the rocks allegedly had been made to look like an erect phallus. And uh, they hired an artist and they adulterated the picture and took the phallus out so they would have a control. They, and then they showed it to people and measured their galvanic skin responses and found out that the picture with the phallus had a greater effect than the picture without the phallus. Advertisers just can't admit it. I mean, of course they can't admit it. They're not going to say they embed you know, phalluses and cigarette ads. I used to work in advertising for many years as a research director. And all I ever got in response to uh, uh, my questions were obscenities. There was a memo, which I have a copy of at home, from the National Association of Advertising Agencies. They went out to every advertising agency in the country advising them what to do if I come to town. They said, keep the hell away from this guy. Mindig úgy vélte, hogy jobb lenne egy műköröm, mert annyi tennivalója akad? Ha amit ön szeretne, az egy gyönyörű, természetes küllemű, könnyen használható köröm, nem kell semmi más tennie, csak... Pulzusainkat már átalakították. Egy mesterségesen létrehozott öntudat állapotában vagyunk, ami álomnak tűz. Átkozott hekker, már másodszor koszol bele az adásba. Nyolc hónappal ezelőtt kezdődött, mikor egy kis tudós csoport véletlenül felfedezte, hogy bizonyos jelleken küldenek a... Ebbe bele a fejem. Nekem mondod? Biztos hónapokba telt, míg elintézte. A szegénység és nyomorúság egyre nő. A fai egyenlőség és az emberi jogok nem léteznek. Létrehoztak egy pusztuló társadalmat, és mi ebben is a cinkosaik lettünk. Mindent elkövetnek azért, hogy az öntudatot teljesen megsemmisítsék. Transzba ringadtak minket. Immáron idegenek lettünk önmagunk számára, és másoknak is. Csak is a saját céljainkra összpontosítunk. Kérem, értsük meg, nem eshet bajuk, míg nem fedjük fel a kilétüket. Ez a túlélésük leghatásosabb módszere. Merüljünk álomba, legyünk önzők, maradjunk álomba. Tudod, mit fordulj fel, te szemétládom. Mivel pontosan egy rózsabokorra zuhant, de pár karcoláson kívül nem esett más baja. 